can actually also uh, put down our resources to assess that which uh, is uh, more of, of uh, I mean, uh, that which will benefit us more because when we uh, uh, put down our resources, uh, assess that. I have the go of uh, number one is the Hi, good morning, Joe. How was your weekend? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Right, my dear viewers, please welcome to the program. Yeah, quickly we'll start uh, with uh, clip one. Of course, it's what we started last week, but uh, we're going to so give you some of the fascinating of that event. And today, uh, you are going to have more and more of that very, very beautiful. Uh, pictures, of course, with the uh, Vice President, Mr. Komen, the Minister of Minister of State for Aviation, Adikika, because he's Komen, the President of ICAO, who happens to be in Nigeria. Yeah. With all of that, we we'll just be coming one after the other. We we'll start with clip one. Right, yeah. one is here. Right. Um, well, Joe, uh, uh, the whole idea of what went on then was um, infrastructure, because it was education infrastructure and ambition, and that was finding our viewers that for the first time uh, this uh, forum would be happening anywhere outside Montreal, Canada, for the very first time. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, Abuja, Nigeria. Right. There we go. Declaration and um, development of uh, aviation infrastructure in Africa. Declaration and framework for a plan of action by uh, ministers of uh, member states of Africa and Union for Asia, uh, representatives of Africa and Union Commission for Asia, uh, the new partnership for African development, uh, EPA planning uh, and coordination agency. Uh, the African Development Bank, ABC, of course, you know, is headed by our own Honorable uh, um, uh, 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 United Nations Commission for Africa, uh, uh, the African Civil Aviation Commission, AFCAC, uh, representatives of uh, international and regional organizations, not just the global community. And uh, financial institutions are uh, attending third international city organization and how world education third of our second second November 2000. Uh, the theme was the financing the end of education. Uh, let's move to the next So here are the considerations. Uh, so considering the Convention on International Civil Aviation, the Chicago Convention of the 7th of December 1954, the Central Abuja Treaty, 3rd June 1991, was entered into force on 12th May 1994. The Constitutive Act of the African Union, AU, in Rome and Togo. Uh, 11 July 2000, entry into force in 2001. Um, the constitution of the AFCAC uh, adopted in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, 17 January, and amended in Dakar, Senegal, 16 December 2009, with entry into force 11 May 2010. It became an uh, OAU uh, stroke AU specialized agency in the field of civil aviation. 11th May 1978. Uh, the declaration, these are the considerations, by the way, that you know, for what was the eventual um, was made. The, 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 number five, the declaration on the program for infrastructure development in Africa, PIDA, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, 30th uh, January 2012. Number six, declaration of the plan of action uh, 2017 2019 in Lome, Georgia. Uh, the third, uh, 17 March 2017. Uh, and clip three here, yeah, and then we we'll now see uh, what uh, we calling uh, uh, members to achieve. So, calling members to take the following action. That, that was the essence of the forum. Uh, uh, call on ICAO AUCP, all those that are going to and NCA, UNECA, AFCAC, African Convex, and then FRAA. 
that is discussed here. Um, uh, a. Provide technical expertise, resources, and support for implementation of agreed action. B. Engage in a resource mobilization campaign towards the realization of uh, aviation infrastructure in Africa. C. E, uh, determine through appropriate gap analysis the aviation infrastructure needs of African states towards a single star, which is an integrated, interoperable, and seamless continental system, taking into consideration regional plans, targets, and uh, existing and future capacity requirements under the ICAO Global Plan. And D, prepare and incorporate the Bukina Work Plan and Aviation Infrastructure Development Plan for Africa and coordinate this implementation. Now, let me take you to, to, uh, to number two, where, of course, we have engaged in the resource mobilization campaign, uh, and uh, particularly for Africa. Why do we have to focus on Africa? Are we saying that even, of course, uh, the European countries are uh, all is well with them? No, not, when, not, when, not really. When it comes to uh, uh, aviation been, infrastructure. Not really. It's been uh, realized that uh, African nations have not been accessing huge funds available for aviation infrastructure out there. Have you, have you wondered for one second how a little country, the UAE, is in Dubai, is been expanding their international airport into a massive city. Massive city that's almost getting bigger than Abuja right now. Just an airport. And the huge sums of money is sunk in there. You think it's only all, all the oil money they are, they are, they are making, they are, they are putting in there? No, no, no. Guys are accessing funds available out there that we haven't put our acts together to learn how to access them and bring them in. As a matter of fact, uh, I can bet you that most of the officials of uh, our aviation sector learned for the first time in, in that forum that have huge funds out there that we're not accessing. And, and it was there that it, it was revealed that the latest uh, international airport built in Senegal was built without a single dollar belonging to the Senegalese, you know, invested in that airport. So, so how, yeah. how, how does the, the investor get back his money? Oh, yeah, that's the, the package that we need to, I told you that last week, that from the lessons learned, obviously government needs help. And people like you and I to you know take up the challenge and, and, and help. Now that we have the information, now that we, we, we know where to ask questions and um, you know uh, get the knack of you know packaging this properly, we can help the government. After putting it all together, we walk up to the, the, the honorable minister of state and say, hey Mr. Uh, Minister, here we are. Now we've got to do this. That the, we are we are proposing that we do this, do that. Okay, 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 okay. But now, 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 here is how we can get the funding. Yes. And, and then he takes it to Mr. No, President, we, and the we, thing we is done. We'll come to the yeah. funding uh, issue. Yeah. But uh, on the infrastructure, what really are the gaps? I feel there's there's so so much. <laughs> Anybody think that here will be? Uh, I don't know how to describe what what the experience. We are going to be dealing with right now. Uh, I mean, we, uh, a, a single wrong way is a big danger to it. Even even uh, uh, two wrong ways are, are not enough. Because we find that there. Uh, 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 let me use the wrong way. That is that is for a busy airport. It's not just only about a busy airport. So sometimes uh, for safety. Uh, I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example. Very quickly, so that you see what the kind of thing that can happen. Here is, here is an airplane, you know, approaching uh, for landing, for instance, and suddenly something, something just went wrong. Um, this engine went bump and, uh, and failed, right? Immediately what you find is this, uh, this airplane is yawed to the side of the engine that, that, is, bad. that, that is bad because of the force coming from the engine that's, that's alive. 
quickly. The pilot, an experienced pilot uses a system that is known, a principle that is known as dead engine, dead food, to quickly balance up this you know, airplane to maintain its course. But there, there now, there is a problem. You know what the problem is? Getting this airplane to now bank to the, to, to the left becomes an uphill task. Because this engine, that is, uh, this right engine that is working, is giving a cross that is showing the aircraft to the left, that, uh, to, uh, to the point of, I mean, to the side of the bad engine. And for you now to make a bank using your, I mean, and getting your yaw to the right using your rudder, definitely the force of this engine is stronger than the wind pressure, and remember you're coming to land, and your speed has reduced. So the, the wind pressure on your rudder is not enough to, to effectively counter the, so you can get your correct bank to align to, to a, a particular runway that's, that's available. But if you have runways that are positioned in, you know, in different uh, directions, and you, you have such a problem, what happens is the control tower quickly assigns you to a runway that allows this easier way, easier banking with the bad engine or to, to your left. Maybe they gave you a runway 18 right, uh, you know, as you were approaching, and this problem developed. You quickly announced to them, "Look, I got a problem. My uh, my left engine is gone, and uh, uh, you know, uh, banking to align with that run, runway 18 R." It's not possible anymore. What do they do? Quickly, they clear off the other runway to the left and say, okay, head for runway you know, 18, L, 18 left. I'm just giving you an example with the, the kind of numberings they give to you know, wrong ways. Wrong way. So the pilot has an easier you know, move, an, an alignment you know, to, for, for a final approach for landing. Just imagine for one second that that opportunity does not exist because you have just a single runway that is to the right of the approaching air, airplane. What does the pilot do? It's, it's, it's a whole lot of, I don't know how to describe the, 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 the tension in the, the cockpit. And so more often than not, passengers do not even know what's going on. And those, those guys in the cockpit are struggling to save their own lives as well as the lives of the precious passengers they have in the the airplane. So I'm, I'm just giving you an example of why we must have enough infrastructure. And also to infrastructure to cap. Yes, yes. So, to, to ensure that we we have absolute certainty. Remember, I always say to you that this machine yes, is awesome. Yes, the, the, and the, 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 the aside, aside yeah. the runway, where are we in terms of instrument landing system? That's part of it. I'm just giving you one one other example. For instance, the instrument landing system stuff. Remember when I talked about instrument you know, landing? Uh, the world is dealing with category 3C right now, and we are we are still playing around with uh, categories 1 and 2. That means once there is a Hamatan case, you know pilots can you know safely land. They're on vacation. Oh, they, they go on vacation. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> using your own language. Well, <laughs> but with, with, with the 3C and um, airplanes uh, that that have been uh, configured to to comply, you know. The pilot will cross his leg and what, 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 his what, coffee, what, what, what this issue in. discussed? Sorry. The, Every issue that had to do with um, uh, safety, infrastructure, every bit was discussed. Every bit. But it's important that we start rolling those photographs for our lovely viewers to see the people that made it happen. You know, uh, let's, uh, let's roll those photographs one after the other so that I can I can tell the, the um, uh, our viewers uh, who these individuals are, and then uh, we'll, take them, we'll take them from there. Can, can you start rolling those photographs for us, please? Uh, here is Captain uh, Mukta Usman, uh, uh, of course, our own uh, you know, Mukta uh, of um, uh, NCAA. Uh, you, you, you know him? You know, he, that, that was the man who went to yes, went uh, see. Unfortunately, he was uh, he was uh, 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 That's uh, uh, correct. You know, uh, move, move 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 to the next one. Move to the next one quickly. Let's yeah, let's take the one after the other. Uh, of course, you have uh, our our own um, Captain Nuhu. Uh, uh, Captain Nuhu, uh, uh, of uh, uh, representative of uh, Nigeria on the on the council of Baikal. He's the one. He, he, 
he is one representing Nigeria. You know, you know, Akao is all about uh, country representatives get, you know, getting together in Montreal, Canada, and dealing with issues of uh, aviation uh, internationally. So this gentleman, uh, this gentleman is representing us, and I mean, he was he was there live. Uh, okay, uh, move to the next. Uh, move to the next one. Let's uh, let's see next. Uh,
message you and I have and as, uh, as far as aviation is concerned. Get us all our photographs quickly before time chases us away from the studio. Uh, get, get us all those. Uh, and this is Ulumiura Bernard Aliu. Guess who this guy is? Uh, he is the president of International Aviation Nigeria. Are you, are you, are, are you shocked and thrilled to know that the man at the helm of affairs in Canada is a Nigerian? Are you here? I'm sure you heard that for the first time. When it comes to world aviation issue. Yes, yes. And you, I, I, I'm sure you're shocked. Yes. You, uh, you're not aware that it's a Nigerian that's on top of it. And then again, I had a beautiful one on one with him. And uh, he was such a sweet, nice guy. And these guys are looking forward to building up the aviation sector. But I realize in Nigeria, but I realize that the government needs help. And so we'll do everything we can to bring all the information required to provide information support. So that is uh, we are uh, uh, Bernard Aliu, uh, president. Yeah, it's just so oh. so interesting to yes. know that yeah. well, Nigerians, I are, Nigerians are big time out. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And uh, which is yeah. why uh, the country needs to do uh, best to make sure these things are engaged. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, I told you that listen, uh, this is an international aviation trip, the only one in the world. You said to me, and you were in Nigeria. I said yes. So you look American. I said, "Oh, I'm Nigerian." <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then we laughed it off, and then they went into other issues. Uh, so let's move on to the next, uh, the next uh, lovely photograph and see who's there. Who's there? Quickly. Oh God! Uh, guess who this is? Because uh, <laughs> the, the custodian of uh, Nigerian aviation. The honourable uh, minister of state, Hadi Abubakar Silka, the man. The brain, the brain the behind host, it all. The host. Not just only the host, the brain behind it all. I mean, he, he put it all together, packaged it to Mr. President, convinced Mr. President because, of course, that program cost a whole lot of money. I mean, the whole of trans hazing was a cry by people who stayed by uh, the government of Nigeria. It was worthwhile money, money well spent, if you ask me. So, if, if you was a jamboree, Joe, I will announce it here. <coughs> and my viewers, trust me. It was a very useful, useful period. And Nigeria is going to tap from it, and people of our aviation are all of us that fly better than I've ever been. All right, let's move to the next photograph. Next one. Yeah, we have been minutes, then. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we have this uh, gentleman known as Alexandra um, uh, Dunai. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly because that sounds like French. <laughs> Alexandra de Dunier, uh, and that is the uh, Director General and CEO of IATA. You've heard about the sure. International Air Transport Association, IATA. You know, he, she was quite uh, very beautiful at that room and uh, told us quite a lot. And uh, she was here live. Uh, I, I wasn't opportunity to get to have one on one with him, but. Um, the exchange flight as we But one can only agree yeah. that that forum was a rich one. Because yeah. when you have uh, IC people, when it uh, comes to the issue of issue, they are like the WHO yeah. that's uh, represented, and then uh, IATA is represented, that's um, NCAA, of course, they are all there live. It's not an issue of, okay, uh, the main man is busy and um, is sent to the FTTV. They are all there. Even our yeah. own. Yeah. 
navigation services organization civil air navigation services organization so i mean they they, they keep working hard on improving navigation around the world to have airplanes that are going into hundreds of thousands in the air every day you know prepared in such a way that there's no air pollution these people are busy working every day and developing new ways to get the job done in the air you know so here you got uh, Jeff Paul, the director general if you would like um, uh, uh, next photograph quickly please next photograph of another amiable woman you know who's um, uh, uh, she is uh, Miss Angela Gaten. Angela Gaten. She, she is the Director General of uh, Air Force Council International, usually known as ASIWAR, ACI WAR. You know, commonly known as ASI WAR. She is the woman at the top of the of affairs there. Air Force uh, Council. That's correct. Uh, Miss Angela uh, Gaten. Uh, I had the